Hello everybody, welcome back to Wappleville. One more thing for Orktober. We've got ourselves, guess what, an Armada ship right here. One of the Orc ships. And something a little bit special about this is that it was 3D printed. Yeah, so this was a STL file. And I do believe the Mantic is doing like a campaign here where you can get, I think, the Basilean ships and the Orc ships as STL files. Then I have to say it was pretty darn easy to print this thing out and it was a whole lot easier putting this together than the usual uh, than the usual resin ships because well no mold lines to worry about or anything like that look at here Landrass this is that 3d printed orc ship and this just this this part alone right here was a thousand times easier to deal with than the resin stuff and obviously well no mold lines now I did have to pirate this from the dwarf box right here so yeah, I just I I kind of pilfered that. I just thought, well, you know, I'm not going to be doing the dwarf box anytime soon, so why not just do that right now? But uh, hopefully this is a good cause here because we've got ourselves an STL fight with no mold lines, and this was all one piece. So in the the resin version, the the cast version, this is a separate thing. This is a separate thing. Believe me, this is a whole lot easier to work with. So yeah, there will be, unfortunately, there will be no catching of anything, sadly. It's, uh, <laughs> and I haven't heard from anybody, not from insurance, not from anybody, not even from the garage guys, so there's that. Again, uh, wasn't really thinking it was going to happen anyways, <laughs> especially now that it, I think it's about 38 degrees here. I don't know, uh, actually, hey, Valfira, how, uh, is it getting chillier down there too? Because uh, it was in the 30s last night and I think when I was trying to rake leaves earlier today it was maybe 41 degrees or something in the sun. Now this is, oh this is another thing. Look at this. See notice that that opening right there. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, you can kind of see how that's closed because, well, being a cast thing. So here you have to glue that jib on there, and, and then you got this big solid thing here. That does not happen with these. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking, yeah, we're just, uh, that might be something I'll have to do then because that's a whole lot easier than screwing around with the... Now, of course, you don't have the bases. So I'm going to have to find that stupid plastic card and start cutting up pieces of that, either that or get some that maybe is a little bit thinner like this. Now, yeah, Valfira again, sorry. Sorry I have no better news for you. But uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, that's just going to be... Oh, well. That, that's that's pretty much what I kept hearing was a lot of, oh, well. And, and then nothing, so... Uh, oh, thanks, Tarzan. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the other disturbing, again, this was Kathy's vehicle, so there were things of hers in there because, well, you tried to, you don't want to just expunge it of all memories of the person, especially when it essentially was theirs. So that that's another, obviously, those are things that are not, uh, those are not going to get recovered. Uh, so it's pretty similar for Valfira down there. Uh, I guess, well, that's right. Sarge was talking about frost down in Texas there. Or at least, well, maybe not frost, but in the 30s. Now, again, this is uh, a very, very simple, simple with the preglaze here. So, yeah, and of course, obviously, there will only be whatever the blue book value is for an eight-year-old vehicle, which, well, now, we probably won't be able to afford our new evil lair in that Norwegian fjord just on the proceeds of that. So, I'm thinking uh, maybe maybe we start needing to uh, get some programs on some USB drives and maybe, uh, maybe get some seed money for the... Uh, for our, again our giant evil painting lair in some random Norwegian fjord. Uh, of course, uh, Arathu has to do the scouting for that. 
Hey there, Big Chimpo, how you doing? So yeah, Big Chimpo, of course, uh, you know, the the evil lair inside a volcano usually never works out very well. Because for whatever reason, by the end of the movie, the volcano always erupts. Well, also Sauron kind of learned that hard lesson too. So I'm thinking, you know, you need a, a lair that's in a more geologically stable region. Yeah, you don't you don't want a lair just uh, again and in, in some kind of seismic active place. So uh, now, of course, uh, interestingly enough, now here it could snow about I don't know 14 feet, and it really wouldn't matter. <laughs> so there's. There's no parking spaces to shovel out front. That's going to be the interesting thing this winter because, well, uh, I, I think uh, you guys heard the story. What happens here, right, when it snows and out come the lawn chairs and everything because you spend two, three hours shoveling your spot and then someone says, oh, look at this, and takes it. Yeah, don't have to worry about that anymore. Everybody else is on their own now. Uh, so Painterly Git says that Iceland might be more uh, might be more cost effective, maybe a little bit more luxurious, right? Painterly Git because, uh, well, we would have free geothermal heating and also hot tubs. Well, don't don't doesn't everybody ask me to do like a hot tub stream or something like that? I I guess it will be a hot tub stream from Iceland. Uh, well, let me see. Uh, so Uber Yeti says that Iceland is amazing. Oh, now uh, Iceland. <laughs> Weird segue here. I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with the movie Made in Iceland. And it's called Estropia. And it's a movie. It's basically a movie about D&D. &D. If you have not seen this, it, it's pretty darn hilarious. And and in, in some ways shockingly accurate, too. Kathy really loved that movie. And uh, now it's obviously subtitles. right? It's obviously in subtitles. But you, you might want to look into it. I think it, it's called Estropia. So that uh, I, you'll you'll get a kick out of it because uh, it's it's pretty neat. You, it's like wow, it took Iceland to make this movie, but uh, you might like that. So again, uh, check that out. It it, it it was made a number of years ago now. I think maybe the early two thousands or something like that. But you might uh, you might find that intriguing. Uh, let's see. So Valfera, well, the other actually, I know where my evil lair would be. It would be under uh, underneath the Melbourne Cricket Grounds. That's that's where my evil lair would be under the uh, Melbourne Melbourne Cricket Grounds. Because that way, I can play both cricket and footy. So Quiz again, have yourself a good one. Appreciate you being here. It's, it's always great to see you. It's always great to see you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just keep getting rid of some of this stuff here. Yeah, uh, but again, uh, painfully get you take care of yourself for sure. Definitely want uh, want a healthy and happy painterly get. Just wipe a little bit more of that away. Uh, we got our sponges over here. Now this is all supposed to be fire down in here, so we'll just uh, we'll do whatever we can with that. Uh, there's no way to paint this with subassembly because this has to go on before this. So, and this has to go on. So, the show must go on with whether or not there's subassemblies or not. Yeah, Megan, uh, you know, it's 70, then it's 30. Actually, Valfira, um, you're not getting that uh, the seesaw again, are you? Because remember the one, was it last year? 
or was it the year before where it was just it, it couldn't make up its mind what it wanted to do if it would have just picked a lane you could have dealt with it but because it was bouncing around back and forth I, I'm sorry that my memory fails me here. I just I wasn't sure if it was maybe this this year or last year. Must have been last year. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now let's uh, start messing around w with our our lighting on this thing over here. Let's see what we can do with this. Ah, so it was in the eighties on Friday. Boy, I mean the. And now, now like it, now like we're saying, right? It's it's practically uh, frost, frost time. So again, here's hoping, here's hoping that it just kind of again picks a lane. It says, all right, it's just gonna be cold. Just gonna be cold. All right, fine, whatever, do your thing. Whatever. Now we gotta shove this baby down in here somehow. And just first, we just gotta get some. We gotta get some of our color in there first. Somehow, that's why I'm using this old junky brush because I I literally just have to shove this thing in there and hope for the best. Uh, Valfira, given that, well. So say we all. Given certain things, I'm not even, you know, this week ain't over yet, right, Velfira? So much for the year. We're just going to try and survive this week, aren't we? Hey there, Arid. Uh, speaking of somebody that's had one or two Easter eggs show up over the last year. Thank you so much, Arid. Appreciate that. And again, Arid, I'm glad that your uh, stream anniversary was very successful. Everybody, please give Arid again wife a follow. Oh, you know what we don't have out here? I don't have my uh, Fanchin or Napsol Red because we were using the Perline Red. Now we'll have to get some, uh, some of our more standard reds out here. Again, I'm just trying to get me some of the... Uh, some of the uh, now let's try and get some orange in here. Let's see if we can do that now. Uh, well, sorry that there was Easter eggs at work, uh, Arid. Well, yeah, boy, I, I don't want to jinx you. I don't by just saying it in a humorous way. But you know, you don't want the Easter Bunny to follow you home. You had enough of those there. Easter Bunny did enough work at your house. Uh, Velfer, it's a mix of the fluorescent yellow, but there's some of the radiant yellow in there just for opacity. Oh, there's also a little bit of Indian yellow in there just to kind of help it maintain a little bit of punch. Because, ironically enough, putting the radiant yellow in there kind of takes away some of that punch. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose our punch because that's medicine. Oh, wait, sorry, different kind of punch. Oh, um, yeah, let's get some of that in here too. We, I tried really, 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 really hard to not get too much pre-glaze too, too, uh, in too much proximity to all this stuff here. Now we can start to go a little bit more orange here, I think. Let's do that. A little bit more of the orange. Hey, Bithron, fantastic. Now, Bithron, sorry, the, you know, last night I couldn't kind of keep going, but, well, there had been two sleepless nights during the week with no made-up sleep. So I was uh, a little bit concerned about sleep streaming. I actually, I actually had to tell the folks last night the story about sleep streaming and tell them the uh, the joys and hazards of Alka-Seltzer plus cold medicine. Uh, let's see. Uh, now I'm glad that you were able to find those. Ah, uh, Delta, welcome back. Welcome back, Delta. Great to see you again. 
let me get to my ah okay that's all right so there is supposed to be orange over there. you know what oh look at this hey uh, Valfred, check this out so instead of the usual naphtha or fanchion red mixed with the orange i'm actually using uh I'm using some of the perline red here this is this is a first this is a first right we've never seen this before on stream or on film so uh not sure how that's all gonna ha play out there uh, uh oh gee whiz let's get some of that up here so i've i think i've yeah, I think we've abused that brush about as much as we can. Let me see if I can get another one here. I don't, I'm going to try uh, some more of this. That That's kind of interesting. So that's the perline red and our floral orange. I probably had to put more of the floral orange out here, looks like. But this is certainly uh, very different, very interesting. Hey there, Big Jim. How you doing? This is, uh, well, I mean, okay, I understand. You know, I'm kind of small, small ship, but uh, how many quarters am I going to be able to haul around in this thing? It's not even the size of a quarter, man. What's going on? How you doing there, Big Jim? Great to see you. And same thing, Sakaya. Actually, Sakaya, if you wanted to share some of your latest there, that'd be great. So, uh, Big Jim, uh, yes, sorry I haven't been able to, I was almost kind of hoping to be able to do uh, a get-together with you guys, but, well, things kind of happened. So, yeah, yeah, Big Jim, there was, uh, there was a wee bit of Monday that happened this week. Hopefully for you, not too many personal Mondays this week. Keep those uh, Mondays to a minimum. And of course, again, this was our, we did this one last night. I basically, I got home and we, again, you can, you can see the hot glue right there. I didn't even have time to cover that up, but we did this one last night. Now, hey, actually, Bithron, if you wanted to share, that's right. Sorry, Bithron. Yeah, you wanted to share the the orcs that you've been working on, and Bithron, I don't know if you've seen the Highland Miniatures orcs that are coming in November. It's just uh, I know we were talking about it before, but they are just so much like the old school GW orcs. Uh, so again, Sakai, if you want to share uh, share anything there in the chat stuff again, I know you've been. You got you posted some new things very recently there. All right, so again, we're just trying to get a little bit of that going, just a bit now. Let's grab a filbert brush. There we go. Now, uh, Big Jim. Uh, well, everybody, please give Big Jim a follow. Uh, hey, Jim. Um, will you be doing uh, this this Friday? Uh, any more of the any more cobalt stuff, or is that kind of a that's still an every other week thing, right? With the insane amount of cobalts. Now let's do a bit of this. You can see that preglaze mixing its way into there. Preglaze doing preglaze things. Probably going to get some of our indigo into these sails as well. Just a little smidge here. Again, it's all mixing because look at that. See, see how dark that brush is right there? Ah, so this Friday is going to be cobalt. So everybody, please uh, give a, go follow the Pyro Club. So if you want to see some really fun... So really fun RPG stuff. Go check out the Pyro Club. Everybody also please uh, check out Bithron's Instagram link there. 
Now we're going to light this little, little lighter here. Put some brilliant yellow pale into that. Okay, we're just letting the pre-glaze do its thing here. Combo. Now Van Dyke brown, some Mars black here and there. Maybe even a little bit of the uh, asphaltum. Look at that. Even uh, some of my... Uh, so my floral orange gets in there. I don't care. I'm just going to use it. We'll just use that here. Hey, Rogel Dave, how you doing? Nice to see you, Rogel Dave. Everybody, please give Rogel Dave a follow. Uh, so, Rogel Dave, who won the game last night? Yeah, last night. Who won the game? And Rogel Dave, if there's anything that you wanted to share in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, so Rogel Dave, I'm hoping at some point that uh, that we can start live streaming some uh, some Middle Earth SBG, because uh, I think that would be a blast. Be... I don't know, Rogel Dave, don't you think that would be a, a little well, a little less work for sure than trying to do standard battle reports, right? Trying to film those, edit those, and all that kind of stuff. It's like, you know what? Might as well just live stream the stupid thing. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely Bithron. Yeah, definitely change it. Make it your own. I mean, that's what you've done with all your... Remember your Lord of the Rings? figures and and you tried you you figured out something like okay yeah yeah gondor i'm gonna make them more my own so why don't you yeah they've been doing that with everything else might as well keep doing that uh so the necrons the necrons kicked chaos right off the line so you get off the grass that would be uh that would be chaos So yeah, Rogel Dave, uh, I've actually been trying to set things up. The The table is in place. So in this very room is actually a 4x4 four four table. Now, of course, it's in very close proximity to me. It's about, it's about 27 inches away. So can everybody please give Rogel Dave a follow? And Rogel Dave, if you want to share anything in the chat, of course, please go ahead and do so. All right, and again, it happens quick, right? It happens quick, and once again, what's our target here is we're just looking to do something very much like what we did with our other orc ships right here. So it's basically right behind me and to the left, and there is the Surface Pro that's on a, basically it's on a platform that can be swung over so that the Actually, the uh, Surface Pro would be hanging right over the table. Well, Sarge, glad that there was some good news there. I mean, it's not ideal, but you'll take that, right? All right. Hey there, Green Fairy Studios. How you doing? Great to see you again. So, Sarge, again, glad that there was a... Uh, I mean, you'll take it, right? It's... It's one of those things where you're like, oh, okay, it's not a, it's not complete uh, catastrophe. Well, fine, we'll take that. Uh, so yeah, Rogel Dave, uh, what I was hoping to do was have uh, have a thing where, you know, folks in the chat can kind of go, you know, we're we're Team Mordor or something like that. So we're gonna give. We're going to give Mordor an extra reroll here, and maybe restore a point of might. Uh, or we're, we're Team Rohan, so we're going to give Theoden another point of will or something like that to resist maybe a, some kind of a sorcerer's blast from Saruman or whatever to try and dehorse him. Uh, let me see. So, uh, well, that, I'm not going to say anything there, Sarge, because I, I, not that we're superstitious or anything. No, we're not superstitious at all, are we? But I, I'm, I'm not saying nothing because I don't want to jinx anything. You know, if I open my, uh, if I open my face about that, you know, the, the jinx, 
would be waiting to happen. So I'm not I'm not going to jinx that for you. So yeah, somebody says, "Oh, look at Prince Imrahil right there." Yeah, let's let's give Prince Imrahil an extra. Yeah, he needs to. He just used his last might on a, a heroic combat last turn. Maybe uh, maybe he needs another point of might so that he can do a heroic challenge against uh, the Witch King. Yeah, let's just get some of these little crazy edges again. I don't care that that uh, some of our floral colors kind of leaking out over the edge. It don't bother me none. Don't bother me none. Now let's let's get a little something going on out here. A little something. This here, because this is what we're looking to do here, right? Something along the lines of that. So, uh, wow, we might have to get some more of our radiant green out here. There's a little thalo green in with that tool. And we're just going to chuck this on here. And then we'll let that all just kind of get mixed in with the blending brush because it's what we do. Like so. Other side, same deal, trying to get that, again, that sort of sea foam green, except over here where we're going to maybe try to have some of our uh, fire light reflected onto our water. I think that would uh, only be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Now let's get some of our fast map white out here. Because, well, reasons. More of that over here. Expand this outwards. Like that. I'm going to use... Ah, uh, here's a paper towel. Bass mat white again. Now a little bit more of a dry brushy thing, probably. More like that. Yeah, let's carry it all the way out to the edge here, too. See if I can move you up a little bit there. Uh, maybe we'll just back out a little bit. Now here, let's do this again. And now let's do that. Actually, have to move down a little bit there. Now, so Green Fairy Studios, I hope that uh, hope that you've had yourself a decent Monday so far. I mean, it is Monday after all, so how decent can it be? Just a couple of those. Boy, that does make such a difference. Let's try this again here. We'll still be coming at this with some more of our lighter colors for water, but for now we'll just leave it about here. And then we're going to get a little bit of something out here, but again, most of that we want it to be more of the more of the firelight there. We will uh, do our black line along the edge there, because that's going to also help us to figure. Okay, just what do we got going on here with our uh, with our water? How light does it need to be, or whatever? Now here. I'm taking the color of the water and we're using this to almost uh, put some reflected light on that hole over here. It's already on the brush. Why wouldn't I use it? Here, look at this. We're just going to 
use that right here for, for folks that uh, are new here this is all done with traditional oil paints traditional oils right out of the tubes no no mediums or alkyds or anything like that just traditional oils and 41 minutes ago this had no paint on it because it's, it's kind of how things go here don't blink it happens fast It happens very, very, very fast. Now we did manage to get that next, or the last Patreon video posted to the Patreon page today. Again, I apologize that uh, there there was the disruption there in the filming schedule. Not uh, not much I could do about that. Even try and get a little bit of that here on the undersides of these sales here. So Green Fairy Studios, this right here, this entire sale here, both jibs and both uh, regular mainmast sales, those are all. That's all one piece. So you didn't have to glue these onto the sale and everything. Uh, just all one piece. A lot easier to deal with. Ooh, and now the other thing too is we've been using the uh, perline red. Yeah, now I'm also here. Let's get the uh, naphtha red out here for our our little axe icon things, whatever. Let's get those going. What do we have here? Yeah, I'll just use this stupid brush here. What the heck? I'll just kind of dry brush that on there, like this, because now. Our pre-glaze is sort of shading what we're doing here as far as our our axe designs. So it's a, it's basically shading that I don't have to worry about. Nothing I had to do. Just kind of happens by itself. So I guess it's uh, that Landress was saying that it's just uh, it's like a monthly release kind of a thing. For whatever reason, I thought it was a Kickstarter campaign. I don't know what. Well, given everything that's uh, going on here, I, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Let me grab the this brush over here. I think. Let me see if I can't take apparently yellow pale, some of the fluorescent yellow. We'll mix those together, turn that into a pin line wash here. It's going to take some, uh, some doing because both of those colors, again, are really just naturally very thick. Remember, you can thin the oils. You cannot dilute them. If it's if it's a fast matte oil, in this case a brilliant yellow pale, when you do that pen line wash, it's still going to be brilliant yellow pale. And the, just because this is thinned down to almost 90 something percent thinner, doesn't mean that it's not going to be incredibly light. Uh, so that's definitely something we'll have to uh, we'll have to look into for sure. Oh, by the way, earlier this uh, not not long before the stream, I did find and they were they're free files. They were free files. They are uh, basically flying stands for BFG ships. I'm sure they could work for uh, kind of old school 40k and fantasy flying things as well. So yeah, I found those. Uh, they're free, and I'm going to try and get those things printed out overnight tonight into tomorrow, and that's what the BFG ships will go on. Well, at least that's the idea anyways. Okay, so now that's got a little bit more light to it.
Ah, uh, yeah, Landrass, that's, uh, see, that's the kind of innovation we've been looking for, right? You know, not not that a certain other company may or may not be named Smeem Schmirk Shop are uh, loath to do something like that, right? Get a little bit of the uh, Indian yellow in here now. Whoops, wrong way. This way. Okay. Now, is this the only, uh, so far, is this the only release that they have, then, is, uh, oh, whatever the heck this ship is, the smash -a burner or whatever, it's an orc ship, there's probably burner or smash -a in the name, or crash -a, I don't know. Uh, well, Landress, the, the next thing you know, uh, who knows, game companies might also start, uh, they might also, uh, they might steal your blank canvas miniatures idea as well. Hey, Mad Dave, how you doing? Great to see you again. I hope that uh, things have, uh, you had yourself a good weekend. And I also hope that, uh, well, Halloween is fun for you. Uh, well, Landrest, uh, I'll, I'll have to see what I can uh, what I can do with that. All right, so there there we go. See, so we're starting to get some of the uh, the fiery stuff here reflected out onto the uh, onto the water. Uh, well, Mad Dave, I'm glad that you could do that. I'm glad it was a success. Uh, actually, Mad Dave, I don't know if there's maybe a, a website or something that kind of shows, you know, some of the some pictures of the event or whatever. If you wanted to share those, that'd be great. Uh, and, and oh, actually, Mad Dave, and now it's what's the name? S Y L L O G Y. That is the name of the uh, folks that have some BTEC files there. I just I wanted to double check on that because, well, let's just say that things got a little crazy this week. A little bit crazier than uh, what we were expecting. Ah, okay, that's good. Glad at least that is right. So boy, yeah, Landris, that they've got the whole range out there practically. It means that they've got the Empire of Dust. Oh, remember the one Empire of Dust ship where all I got were, well, not the sails because they don't really have sails, but there was no hull. I got the base, some of the weapons, and no hull. Remember that craziness? Yeah, otherwise, we would have ourselves basically almost a complete fleet for uh, Empire of Dust. Let me get the rest of that. Okay. So I'll have to hit that with a uh, with one of our smaller brushes there, too. Now, you know what? Let me see. Oh, let me see if we can do something like this here. Let me take maybe this here brush. Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's use our... Uh, that's, oh, that's the other... Again, new thing, we're using that perline red now a little more often. I'm going to mix that with some of our Mars black, a nice deep red here. And we'll just hit these uh, shields with that, I think. And yeah, yeah, let's just do them all this way here. So this is actually one of the orc ships that I never never got a chance to paint. I don't think maybe it wasn't in the starter set or whatever because I think that's all. I, yeah, all I ever had from the orcs was the starter set. 
from the main box, like the main starter box. Hopefully this is on the right size base. It has to be, because if it was on anything smaller, I don't think it would fit. I mean, well, who knows? Maybe it does go on a smaller base, but I don't care. This is going to stay on this. Ah, so Empire of Dust was July. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I can say, hey, could I just do some of the STLs for a couple of ships there? For ones that would be either good for painting on streams or the ones that we never got. In the initial waves. See what I did there? Huh? Initial waves of ships. Yeah. yeah that's the kind of linguistic uh, gold that you just don't get anywhere else. You are not getting that anywhere else. Just, just here. It's probably for the best also. Uh, the land dress, of course, and naturally the, the hatred, uh, much like unicorn's blood, makes us stronger and provides us uh, long-lasting and eternal life, does it not? Might even throw a little bit of that into uh, here, just for funsies. Like that. Now let's see if we can get some of this... Uh, this metal on here. Hey there, Kiki Turtle. Great to see you. Great to see you. And of course, Eric, I don't know if you had a chance to post your uh, your usual Pinterest links there. But as always, please go ahead and do so. Let's throw a little bit more of our deeper reddish orange down in here. That will make some of our other stuff on the interior just seem, yeah, that much lighter. Sometimes you have to do that. You must have dark to show the light. Hey, Forest Returns, great to see you again. Hopefully your, hopefully your Monday was a good one with, well, not much Monday in it. Less Monday, the better. Let me get some more of my deeper red up here. Now, looking at this, okay, let's, uh, let me try something here. So we're going to get this, but we're going to try and use this as sort of a micro filbert brush here, I think. Yeah, let's try this. I'm glad Forest Returns. Definitely glad to hear there's a not, not too much hassle there. And I'll use here let's throw a little bit of our brilliant yellow pail in there too. Now let's see if we can't do a, almost a little bit of dry brushes up. Then we'll do some, maybe some. I don't know if we want to do too much rust there because well then it's going to look an awful lot like our fire light. So maybe we can't do too much rust. That should be metal too. Hey there, Augerbot. Nice to see you again. I hope that you're doing well. Boy, it's been a little while. So, Augerbot, usually for, for kind of maximum efficiency, we try to say, okay, yeah, you know what? This color is already on the brush. I'll just waltz it right over here. And also, too, of course, uh, if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. So we try to integrate that elsewhere, so that's not kind of an isolated color. But usually, especially well, Augur, but you should see when I'm working on multiple figures, that that you really see the example of that happening, where we're just okay. We got this color on the brush. We're just gonna march that right over here on this other figure and just use it here since it's on the brush already.
And yeah, yeah, we'll uh Okay, we'll try and do some some rusts and other things as well. We can't do too much, because if we do, then we again we run the risk of uh our rust looking more like fire. Uh, thanks, Kiki Turtle. Let's see are some of our other orc ships right here. So there's that one and a couple of more right here. And of course, we did a whole bunch of ships here. I mean, even this is just a tiny sampling. So here's our the elf ships that we did. And here's some of the uh, Empire of Dust ships. And here's a Basilean ship right there. And of course, we were showing the... Oops, wait a minute. Just strolled past it there. So we did an entire Northern Alliance fleet with the uh, freehand there. Oh, a Twilight Kin. Yeah, there's no Twilight Kin picks out there. Uh, thank you so much, Arity. I already can't wait. I appreciate that. So say we all. So say we all. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right, let's continue to add some of this lighter stuff in here. And again, we'll, where we can, try to integrate some of that. Ah, there's again. There's your there's your preglaze still working its way under that brush. This might seem incredibly light. It's nowhere near white. Nowhere near white whatsoever. Uh, maybe just use the bright yellow pale here. Nah, not gonna. Not gonna fool around with that anymore. Now let's see what we can do here on the on the water. Let me grab uh, just one of these guys here. Uh, yeah, Bithron, you never quite know, right? What's gonna catch on in one area or another? There's some games just do, and other games just don't, and there's not always a rhyme or reason to it. I want to see just how much lighter. Yeah, we need to get these. These grommets are a little bit lighter, yeah, for sure. Uh, especially on the top edge here. And then we'll use our blending brush the rest of the way. Again, hashtag no layers, right? That's as it is by itself. It's mixing together fairly well. Let's see what we can do here with these shields. So all these uh, shields have the uh, have the boss on them. There probably will go in there. Later, and maybe even hit these with uh, some kind of rust or something like that. And, and of course, the that sort of red, sort of glazy color that we put in there, that doesn't look very wet anymore, does it? Ah, so uh, so Mad Dave has a, a little answer right in there, kind of uh, what can generate or what decides maybe what gets played in a store or kind of what gets popular there in the store. Yeah, actually, uh, man, the, the, the OPR stuff, that, that's another kind of interesting thing that's happened with uh, gaming in the last two, three years, right, Bithron? Having something like that. You would kind of hope that something like that sort of keeps the Smeem Schmuck shops of the world a little bit more honest when it comes to rules. Uh, I don't know, other people would have to, <clears throat> they'd have to tell me if <clears throat> that's been the case or not. Uh, 
The auger bot, actually, ironically enough, we, the whole reason we got into the miniature stuff in the first place was, well, there was the whole stuff that happened with the 2D art and 9-11 and everything, but then we started, uh, at the time, we were playing Blood Bowl with friends, and they, well, they wanted to have painted teams like ours as well. Which led to us painting their figures, which we thought, well, okay, we can just do this as a, a little bit of a show supplement or something. And, well, then it just kind of became the thing. And then it was all miniatures all the time. That's how those things just uh, go, I guess. Let's throw a little bit more light here on the top of the guns here. This is not, I repeat, this is not white here. That is just a, something kind of a, a little mix of some dirty gray, some brilliant yellow pale, a little of this, a little of that. Let's get some more light on the top of these shields. And again, one hour, three minutes ago, this had no paint on it whatsoever. There was no no fiery light, no, no water, no nothing. None of those things. There's some stitching over there. And I, let me tell you, it's so much easier with, with these jibs here because it's all one piece. All one piece. No mold lines, whatever. I'm telling you, I really hope that this works out and just comes out aces for Mantic because maybe it's going to... Maybe it'll force, again, other entities to reconsider that 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 sort of a way of doing things get some warm I laid up here on top of these guys also here let's do this as well So a little combination of the radiant blue and a few other things here. And now before we get too many, let me throw some lights on this and then we'll come back and maybe we will fool around with some rust here. We'll just take the asphaltum, some of the terra rosa, we'll mix them together. We'll do some glazy stuff here. Not so much out here, but maybe over here. Get a little bit more of my light back here too. And even this, again, that is not straight up white. That has color to it. Here, making that light a little bit the lighter too. All right. This, sure, I'll just use that. Terra Rosa. And we'll let this be our darker rust. We're not going to really go too light with the rust necessarily, because again, we don't want that to conflict or whatever with all of our firelight there. And there's some more of our asphaltum. I think we've got ourselves a fair amount of thinner in that. And again, what are we doing here? Just touching the brush to it, that's it. And it has to, it goes where it goes. 
where it stops, nobody knows. I mean, for real, since <laughs> I'm just going to go doink like this. And that rust is going to go wherever it wants to. Wherever you want. Over here. See, that just kind of goes in all those little crevices there. Hey there, Judge Dredd. Welcome back. Welcome back. Great to see you. So this is the, the one STL file that we had. Uh, it, it's kind of cool because it's one of the orc ships I did not have. Did not have this orc ship. So yet uh, something else we can add to our fleet. I still have the... Uh, the small ships, I don't think I've actually assembled those. Actually, I pirated this wooden, uh, the MDF base here from actually one of the dwarf ships. So, like I said, I'm going to have to restore that using uh, you know, some of my plastic card or whatever. Terra Rosa. Yeah, maybe here it uh, can be a little bit more Terra Rosa because we're further from all of the flamey stuff. Again, I'm just touching the brush to it, that's it. So Judge Jed again, great to see you. Appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate everybody that joined me on the stream last night. I know that's an unusual day and, and such for me to stream. But it was uh, great to have folks in the chat keeping me company, of course. You know what, I'm going to say that is metal 2. Why not? And I'll throw some more of this over here. So I saw that, is it Kurzluk? Yeah, Kurzluk, of course, is doing... Oh gosh, I, I think you could say Return of the King Gondor. Which is funny because, well, what did uh, uh, what what did Printing Goes Everon just do? Oh yeah, that's right, Return of the King Gondor. And uh, I think they also, uh, oh, uh, it's interesting because Printing Goes Everon now they are doing essentially uh, Blackgate opens. And I'll finally, I, well, we'll see just what it looks like, but he's, I'm pretty sure one of the things he's doing is Mouth of Sauron, and that's another figure, much like our Denethor, that we, well, I don't even have a single Mouth of Sauron, doesn't matter who makes it, I do not have a Mouth of Sauron, so that's going to be good, be glad to have that. Let me just again throw a little bit of the rust out here. In a couple places, not necessarily absolutely everywhere. Got some of it up here. We got more of it back there. Oh, yeah, down here we I'm try to have a little bit of it. Again, it's just a hint of it there. Now we'll go in the oppo direction. Let's get some uh, dark here with indigo and dyke brown. And we're going to really try and darken down a couple of places here. So we've been uh, adding a lot of mid tones and even, even some highlights here and there, but now we're trying to come back in here with some darks. Some of that over here too. Into the, especially in the folds here. Be 
we will try to get some more of our our lights on the other side here too but right now uh, when in doubt sometimes you just got to make things uh, darker and that's what we're going to do here I still find it really really interesting you know that these areas are open here normally those are filled with a big chunk of resin in there so that, that's something that I really like about the uh, these cast, or not cast miniatures, but printed versions. Yeah, I'm just going to take my thinner and just plop it right over there. So Judge Dredd, hopefully your Monday was a good one. Again, without too much Monday in it. Yeah, hopefully, again, not uh, too much Monday for folks. And again, sorry that the stream started later. It was another one of those where I, I thought I was all set to start streaming. I was, actually, and then a bunch of things unrelated to streaming all happened, and uh, then that delayed things. Yeah. Trying to help out a couple of folks that were, well, they, they were having a lot more Monday than I was. As kind of two separate people that was like, okay, that's a, that's a little bit much on the Monday side here. Let's see if we can offer a little bit of assistance there to D Monday, Monday the day. And just like what we do on all of our other uh, ships there, all right now, uh, this was all added in as always with our heavy gloss gel. Same stuff we use for for icicles, for snow, ironically enough, for sculpting fire. Yeah, seriously, it is it's the same material that I use for sculpting fire. Yeah, uh, here's, here's one. So where it's coming into contact with the hull. We will be coming back with our blending brush too. Now this is another case of thin sticks too thick and vice versa. This is really, really thin. This is almost as thin as our pin line wash, believe it or not. Not quite there, but pretty darn thin, and that's why that's why it's not just mixing in with everything that's there. That's what's actually just kind of sitting on top. It's because of how thin it is. And that, that's the kind of thing that just, as you work with the oils, you, you just get more used to that. It starts to become second nature. That whole idea of manipulating the consistency. I know I get it. If folks have only really ever used the acrylics, they're going to be prone to just painting the same thickness all the time. Which generally in the case of acrylics means piling that paint on there with a steam shovel. Well, in comparison to the oils at least. Once again, get in the lightest color out there. So now that really looks like it's getting churned up there. We do need to have a little more of our light up here too. Let me uh, grab some of this. Create a little bit of a bow disturbance here. but not necessarily as light as what I would normally do because of the nearby fire influence here. Because, well, I might want to just take the, uh, get some more of the orange out here. Now let me, before I forget, sure, we'll just use this. 
Let me just get that black edge around there. It's going to be a whole lot easier. To compare what we've got, is it too light, too dark, or just right? If we actually have this here. I mean, it might uh, I'll still come back with the blackest black on this edge, but yeah, I see already that tells me, okay, do I need to maybe go a little bit later or darker on the top of this? And this is not the blackest black. That stuff, very, very pricey. It's not like this stuff is exactly cheap either, but it's uh, certainly a significantly less on the price side than that blackest black, which is the most expensive base rim painting material known to humankind. Let's do some of that down here, and I think we're good all the way around. Yes, we are. So we'll get this baby closed up here. Also, clean that brush, given that that is acrylic paint. That is not oil paint there, so we're going to get that stuff out of the brush right away. I mean, it is just a craft brush anyway, so... Uh, perline black, indigo, so it's our dark green and the indigo together. Okay, now what we'll do is uh, we'll take the some of our orange again, kind of try and get that onto the tops of the uh, the crests of the wave here. Now, we'll definitely have to get some more orange out here. I need a little bit of opacity. Floral orange. Again, it takes a little bit of thinner to knock that down and make it the kind of the consistency that we want. Something very not much on the thin side here. I might need it to be a little thinner. See how that works. Maybe a little too much towards the yellow there. I'm going to get a little bit more of my red. If it were closer to the flames, I feel better about the yellow, but I'm going to go more with the orange here. Now, I know there's a little bit of shininess there. It can make that a little tougher to see our orange. Maybe even all the way out to the corner there. Okay, and now I'm going to maybe take some of this and see if we can get that onto our fire here. We did the really, really, really light stuff. That's why we do some of this orange here. We'll be coming back with our floral orange into this too later. So... 95 minutes and 46 seconds ago, as Grand Oracle mentions, uh, this had no paint on it. <laughs> yeah, Arda Michael, the, that is uh, my sister. She lives, I don't know, within walking distance of this house. And on an average uh, given afternoon, three or four vehicles will be hit on her block just for those. Now again, 
Those of us that are thinking of adopting somewhat of more old school transportation, we don't have to worry about those things. And of course, again, if you have a vehicle where the mode of transportation is also its own defense system, so much the better. Now, sadly, most apex predators don't really do too well as uh, beasts of burden. That, that's, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate, but... Uh, There would be something interesting about pulling up into a, you know, like a Walgreens parking lot riding a, a Bengal tiger or something like that. You, you might uh, face a little bit of blowback from some uh, ecological organizations, but, you know. Uh, so Arda Michael suggests bear cavalry. Now, of course, bear cavalry, ironically enough, doesn't work so well in the winter time because you get mighty cold, you know, sitting on the back of that animal with no clothes on. Unless maybe, maybe Artemica was suggesting actual bears. Now, you get, I'm going to hit some more of my, my rust over here, too. Now we're kind of getting some more of our light back into this. Now, of course, Bithron says if you have elephants, uh, one of the advantages, obviously, of the elephants is that you have a convenient firing platform. You could also, you could probably put an outhouse on back of an elephant, too. Now that I think about it, here, let's get a little bit of this radiant yellow, mix that with, ooh, gee whiz. <laughs> let's get some Indian yellow over here. That was looking mighty peachy there. All right, that's better. Kind of thin this stuff down, though. Let's get this thinned down. So again, now to avoid the Hannibal effect, as uh, Grand Oracle says, maybe you just have an entire menagerie. So in the summertime, you break out the Oliphants. Uh, so, so Landris just posted the link to it right there. Um, so as as uh, as Bithron says. The Black Seas ships from Warlord will work. I believe those are, I think they're 1350 a scale. Because uh, you can use the Black Seas ships as mercenaries in games of Armada. So yeah, if you, if you have Black Seas ships from Warlord, you can use those in your games of uh, Armada. The rule systems kind of, well, let's just, they, they share some, some aspects. Of course, Mantic's game is uh, going to be more on the fantasy side. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, actually, Grand Oracle, earlier this evening, I was looking for flying stands for those battle uh, Battlefleet Gothic ships. And uh, again, I don't remember which entity it was, but they actually had some for free that you could download on my mini factory. But the same folks, they did sails, rat lines, and other such things for... Uh, Micronaut ships, so probably like one fifteen hundred scale or something like that. Micronaut ships. So yes, you can use uh, Warlord Black Seas ships really in the game. You don't. Uh, you can use those. You wouldn't be uh, like substituting. There's a. There is like an entire. I don't know if you want to call it rule set or whatever forum, but there is. So again, throwing some of this uh, green into here now. 
Uh, Mad Dave, we're doing some color test figures first. Well, also, well, I have to print the... Uh, don't know when that's going to be because I still have to actually print these flying stands, which I only just found right before the stream. And the the ships that are being sent my way, the whole fleet, those uh, those aren't here yet. So at some point in November, that's for sure. That's it, Mad Dave. Uh, no, November could be very small. You might have to uh, you might have to squint a lot <laughs> if if there's a. Uh, if there's BFG ships and more, more of these and also uh, BattleTech stuff, yeah, Mad Dave, you might want to get some uh, get some cheaters or something like that because the screen's gonna, everything's going to be very small. Uh, well, Art Michael, I'm glad that the, you're able to plow through those very quickly. So again, do just a little bit more of that. Uh, more of our green out here just to again get some different colors in these metals it might also contrast with all of the the rust that we've been putting out here too so we did paint some reaper cab stuff back in the day which is not that far away there we go so we did paint some of that now the nice thing is uh, 3d printing it yeah <laughs> no mold lines and it's not going to be rubbery plastic it will be uh, very crisp hey there chris uh, so chris uh, I, I don't know if you heard some of the puns that have been dropped down here so far there's been a few of them already so Chris asks, uh, why do Norwegian warships have barcodes on them? Now that you might wonder, well, is that just like, is that like a clan symbol or something like that? No, uh, actually, uh, it's so that when they dock, they can be Scandinavian. So how you doing there, Doji? Great to see you again. Now Doji said that the uh, tidings must be in our favor to have uh, Armada ships once again. Now, Grand, Grand Oracle says that his were much more sheepish, but he still got a roar out of them. Now, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, Doji, this is one of the STL versions right here. So, this is 3D printed. And let's just put it this way. It was a whole lot easier to assemble this than any of the other Orc ships. It's the only reason I was able to get this thing done. Because I want to say as of... I don't know, 5.45 this evening or so. This this didn't exist. Yeah, this this, this wasn't around. Now, let me see. I'm going to actually get me some more of my fast mat white out here. Wrong shelf. This shelf. So I'm going to get some of our fast mat white out here. Hey there, Aura. How you doing? Oh, come on. There you go. Uh, Grant Oracle, everything is, uh, and I'm sure you'll be totally shocked to hear that I have no idea, because nobody's called, no insurance, no garage guys, no nothing. Now, given the fact that it's in the 30s here, something tells me that uh, nothing's going to be happening. Now, again, if it suddenly goes into the 40s or something like that, maybe that's a different story. But I have heard uh, not a whisper. So Aura, it's done like all the other ones, uh, using the heavy gloss gel for the waves. You Actually, you know, Aura, I would have thought that they would do that, right? Especially since, you know, you need the bases too. Um, so the, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe I'll have to tell them, I said, hey... Yeah, you know, we kind of need the bases, but guess what? You could also, since it's going with the same STL files as the ship, I mean, they could just make that all part of the same STL file, couldn't they? Uh, now, Chris says that, uh, you know, everybody's always trying to find these interesting names for 
different types of ship classes and everything. You know, your battleships, your battle cruisers, armored cruisers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but at some point, he says, you know what, you just got to frigate and move on. That's it. Just got to frigate and move on. Uh, now, Grand Oracle, oh gosh, what's the uh, what's the Warlord game? That And people were actually not super happy with the kind of bases that those ships are sitting on. Uh, was it, is it War at Sea? Is that the game that I'm thinking? Again, it's the, the Warlord World War II ship combat game. Not Cruel Seas. Cruel Seas is a much, that's much bigger. So it is called War at Sea. Uh, yeah, oh, let me bring that out a little bit more there. Lighten up this wave a little. Now I think maybe, because again, we've been uh, messing around over here. I think now we can maybe get some of our lighter yellow, orange stuff happening out here. Oh, Victory at Sea, okay. So Victory at Sea, again, that's uh, Warlord Games. We love Warlord Games. Yeah, absolutely love Warlord Games. They've been fantastic. Obviously, Bolt Action, that's really my thing. But Hail Caesar is also pretty good. And then, of course, you've got... Uh, what's the new one? That, oh, it was the... Uh, set in the... Keltos Universe, what was that called again? Oh, Slanya. Jeez, how could I forget that? So yeah, Doji, uh, we were talking that uh, it's actually designed to... You can use Black Sea ships as mercenaries in Armada. So yeah, you've got yourself Black Sea ships. You also have yourself Armada ships too. All right, so see what we've done there? We've had a little bit of our yellow work in its way out here. Also, we're going to try and get some of that down into our fiery stuff here. So it would, it would take me a while to find my Cruel Seas ships, but I did an entire Regia Marina force an entire force of those i also have painted a couple of uh a couple of the german ships i painted the uh the verposten boot and a mine sweeper then i painted the uh one of the u.s transport ships kind of a smaller one not one of the big lsts so doji if you wanted to post your uh some of your fabulous Eldfall Chronicles miniatures. That'd be great. Again, trying to get this is, uh, I mean, we could go, I guess, even lighter on some of this yellow that we're putting on the edges here. But let's just start with this for now. See where we want to go from there. Ah, so Aura, that sounds really fantastic. Actually, Aura, if you have, if you have any pictures of that, you know, maybe on Insta or Discord or something, you want to share those, that would uh, probably be real fun for people to see. Now, one of the things I've tried to experiment with a couple of times with the heavy gloss gel and our crushed glass snow is to see if I can kind of make that sort of foamy water so instead of just taking white paint and mixing that with the heavy gloss gel which is what I've done in the past the idea there was actually try and also not just replicate the fact that it's lighter and somewhat opaque but the fact that it might actually have a little bit of a glassy texture to it also
So Grand Oracle, if you, if you scroll up right now, it's at about the top of the screen. So Grand Oracle says, well, that's if you don't mind roaming around until the uh, until the enemy kelts you. So again, come one, come all, open, open mic night at the Wampleville Comedy Club. Uh, so everybody check out that YouTube video, that uh, YouTube video link there that Aura posted. Again, just a little bit more orangey, they'll do the same over here now. Same over here in some of these, uh, some of these waves. Like so. Uh, now, Grand Oracle, I haven't had a chance to play that myself, uh, but I did end up seeing some, actually it was a father and son team. Uh, they had a whole bunch of gameplay videos for Hail Caesar. Now, I don't think that Gangs of Rome is still a uh, Warlord product. It was initially, but I think that might be a foot sword North America slash... Oh, gosh. Um... Ah, sorry, I forgot what the, the name of the sculptors were that actually did the sculpting for Gangs of Rome figures. Now, Chris has responded uh, saying that uh, he has a friend who's obsessed with naval destroyers. He, he just absolutely worships them. Oh, thanks, thanks, uh, Grant Oracle. I, we didn't really get to. Oh, do I have that ship sitting over? Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, look at this. It's convenient right there. We didn't get a chance to do that on this one, right? But I just said, well, I gotta do with it on this. So I think it, could, it does. I think it makes a difference. I think that makes a difference there. So here, let me, uh, again, this, ooh, no, 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 let me get a little bit more of the orange in that. It's a little more orange here. Yeah, Grand Oracle, that's, uh, well, there, there's some time, even with, uh, as much as we love MESPG, if you, uh, if you lose out on enough priority rolls, and especially those uh, heroic action roll-offs, that can kind of uh, decide things just a bit. Speaking of which, I think I was talking about this in last night's stream, but the uh, Kylie, the world champ, I guess you know, kind of did this whole world tour and won something like 10 tournaments around the world. They they played against a more like just a regular player. Just kind of like somebody more like us. And they played their list that actually had won a, at least two tournaments. And they played it against somebody who's just kind of like a regular run-of-the-mill person. And the regular run-of-the-mill person rolled everything he needed to roll. If he needed a six, he rolled two of them. He got every priority that mattered. He got every uh, every roll off for heroic actions. And pretty much two turns into the game, it was uh, you knew it was going to be a wipeout for the champ. Now, thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate that. Uh, I had no idea. When I printed this, this one out, I had no idea that it had the whole flame thing going on. So I'm actually I'm really glad that it did because uh, we get a chance to do something like that, don't we? All right, now we're going to let that set for a spell. Let's go up here and let's uh, add some lighter stuff to the uh, little axes on the sails here. Nothing complicated. Just something simple here. Uh, Art of Michael, what's uh, 
Would you believe me if I said they were a pair of Australians, too? Where basically everything there is trying to eat you? But yeah, this is uh, two Australians. Right there, so... That would that made me feel pretty good because again the last two times that I've tried to uh, do the MESBG to say that the rolls on one side were catastrophic and the other side were statistically improbable on the other side was be an understatement. That that was the game where absolutely uh, nothing could be done. And that though that's happened twice now. Uh, so Grand Oracle, the uh, was the Masters tournament that just happened not that long ago in Australia. You had basically something like a Vanquishers list. You had uh, you had I think it was a tree beard a couple of other ants couple of hobbits and i believe uh maybe guai here was it or something like that and that actually was i think they actually won the tournament in the top 10 there were four armies that had well let's just say less than 10 miniatures in them which is rather interesting because all we've heard, as far as the tournament thing goes, is that if you don't have, you know, 7,000 miniatures in a 10-point army, you got no chance. So if that was, well, let's see. So it was, uh, I don't think you could, uh, I think, well, you could, no, that would be, I don't even think that would be a yellow alliance. Well, maybe you could. Maybe you could, because it would be Isengard and Mordor. That would definitely be a yellow alliance, if not a red one. Now, basically meaning that you would lose all of your army bonuses. So, Grand Oracle, let me see. Uh, Kurzlik Miniatures, ironically enough, doing re basically Return of the King. Which, of course, PGO just did, right? And now uh, Printing Goes Everyone is doing basically Blackgate Opens. Which means, at least according to what I saw, I might finally have a Mouth of Sauron miniature that I could use. Which I've, I've never had actually a Mouth of Sauron miniature. I mean, obviously you could just pick a Ring Wraith or something like that and say, okay, he's the Mouth of Sauron. But, yeah, that wouldn't really... It would be... You'd be inclined to kind of mix them up a little bit too easily. So I just, it's kind of ironic, right, uh, Grant Oracle, that just after I printed, literally, the printing goes ever on uh, Return of the King figures. Now, now, uh, Kurzlik just did that. Uh, and I, I was gonna try and get those uh, those Return of the King, well, especially like Elisar. I also did do the Welcome Pack miniatures too, but those I think those can wait. Uh, although we, I guess we'll have to paint uh, Gandalf on Shadowfax because you know not only do we not have enough Gandalfs, we we need more Gandalf just on Shadow Facts, too. I'm going to see if I can't get a little bit of the orange out here on some of this. Maybe a smidge <clears throat> on the bottom part of our shields here. <clears throat> Uh, Chris, uh, it's just uh, this is just a, an internal heating system. Yes, it's not not in the least bit dangerous. Not in the least bit dangerous at all. 
It's like, what's the what's the biggest danger to wooden sailing ships? That would be fire. So why don't we have most of the uh, interior of the hull be uh, fire? Because what could possibly go wrong, right? Now, actually, uh, Grand Oracle, uh, have you? I haven't looked at Medbury miniatures and what Medbury's been doing as of late. Now, Diwali, they're doing, well, I think essentially Isengard. Could be wrong, but I think that's what they're doing is Isengard. Yeah, and I might, uh, might be, oh, gee whiz, we never get our any orange over here. Holy smokes. Okay, look at where I'm holding that brush. Just two fingers on that. Oh, this one too. There we go. Okay, that's a uh, problem solved there. Uh, so Doji says that this is all about getting the plastic, getting all that plastic stuff out of the ocean. You know, they just kind of cruise through and they, they burn that stuff up. Nothing wrong with that. Here, let me get uh, some perline black into this uh, metal here. So I wasn't wrong there then, Bithron. It's uh, some more of the Isengard stuff. Some more Urukai, basically. Get some of that over here. Maybe even a little bit on the sail down here. I right, bet there's a couple of other folks I know that are doing the... Uh, Isengard, I don't think it's no, I don't think Dandelion in Middle Earth has that yet. But there's a few other ones that have stuff that well, really, really, really looks like the GW uh, Urukai. Now you can see what we're doing. We're trying to reflect some of the uh, some of the color from the water here onto the holes, just in a few spots. Uh, welcome back there, Eric. Oh, hey, uh, again, I don't know, uh, Doji, if you had a chance to share, to share your Takori, uh, your diorama there as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention that too. Now, I might come back over here with more of our rust, so great to see you back there, Eric. Hopefully feeling, uh, Feeling much more cozy and comfy and such. Now, ah, okay. That's good there, Doji. Sorry, I just, uh... Well, we've we've been looking out for so many puns that I didn't, uh... Wasn't looking for links. And I didn't want... I want to make sure I didn't miss yours. Okay, again, see, we've got that uh, kind of turquoise, a little bit reflecting up onto the hull. Yeah, Irid, uh, I was, I was denied that particular joy today when I had done a whole bunch of physical work too. It was the idea was do the physical work, then go do that, then get ready for the stream. Instead, it was well, we did all the physical work, and seconds after I was done with that, there was complete mayhem. <laughs> So it was, oh, well, yeah, well, we're not getting to do that. We we do want to offer some uh, kind sentiments to, to to folks that are dealing with the, some not fun stuff this evening. Again, that was the stuff that I heard about earlier tonight, and we just want to do a little bit of a pause to say, okay, we're, we're thinking about you, hoping that uh, things work out over the next few days. Now, of course, uh, we appreciate all the folks that were in the stream last night. Again, as we were painting another one of our Kathy miniatures. And I think it's safe to say that uh, 
even last night, uh, the, the stream was quite the pundle of joy, was it not? Yes, we, we may have punned once or twice. Now, I'm going to actually use this over here. Something a little different. Where's my blending brush? Here you go. We're going to use this. See, it's just a little hint of that kind of a greenish color in there. Going to do that over here, too. Again, you can see this. Uh, it's a very careless brush stroke because it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do that. So just a little something there. Uh, well, because we don't want this to get too boring, right, Grand Ogre? And then, of course, it makes a nice foil for all of the uh, all the fiery stuff down here. That's for sure, doesn't it? And uh, Grand Oracle, it, it kind of makes sense that there would be maybe some moonlight or something like that, because uh, orcs by moonlight, right? Wouldn't exactly be, I guess, broad daylight when they'd be, be, they'd be moving around. It's that much better for our firelight, too, I guess, yeah. Where's that blending brush? There you are. <laughs> yeah, Grant Oracle, it's, uh... Now, I do believe, now, I don't know if anybody else has gotten these files. And, of course, it's been a couple of weeks since I printed these out. I actually can't remember if I had to do the supports. I think, no, I didn't. I don't think so. I think they, they do have some auto-supported ones. Uh, so Chris says that, you know, depending on which way you look at this, uh, it's a, it's in perfect ship shape condition. Other angles, maybe less, uh, maybe less of a ship shape. So again, just run a couple little lights there as it kind of goes down the sails that way. Now, ironically enough, Grand Oracle, this base right here, remember I was saying I was going to have to uh, either, you know, use a piece of plastic card or something to create uh, a base for this? I just, uh, I saw one of the dwarf ships, and, uh, well, I, I kind of borrowed the uh, the MDF base from one of the wooden ships, so it's kind of a, it's it's feeling very steamed right now, Grand Oracle. I think that that orca, that uh, dwarf ship there. Yeah, it's probably feeling a little bit steamed right now. See what I did there? It's been a fantastic evening here. Now, what I'm going to try and do, let's see if this is going to work here. We're going to take our uh, radiant yellow, some of that radiant green. See if I can get the back of these cannons over. I couldn't uh, reach them from the other side because of, well, uh, there was a sales pitch over here. We couldn't get to it because of the sales pitch, so we're just going to have to uh, market this another way with our lighter green here. And, uh, yeah, okay, fine. I'll put a little bit of this lighter green over here, too. Uh, you know, I'm going to try and maybe get some more rust and some other lighter colors on the... Let's hit the deck here. We should definitely hit the deck with something that's a little lighter. Let's throw some of our light over here onto this. I think those are more more pieces of metal over there. Yeah, 
Uh, you know, I'm uh, so tempted to try and do a little bit lighter rust and such there, but if we were to do that, eh, I don't know about that. Mm -mm. It would just look too much like more fire and not really like rust. I am going to try and get a little bit of shading on all the, 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 the bosses here on these shields. Let's do that. Uh, let me see. Well, uh, we're learning an awful lot about orc ships tonight, and just uh, ships in general. This is quite the educational naval stream. Uh, because uh, Grand Oracle, he, he has a little bit of an answer for folks wonder, uh, well, why do brawls really never last very long on long ships? That's uh, because uh, everybody gets decked. All right, let's get some more, more of this on that lower half of these bosses right here. Uh, Grand Oroka, I was hoping that it could do that. Uh, just offer a little extra color something there. Kind of like what we've been trying to do with the sails, right? Getting that, that turquoise on there. Hopefully that, that does kind of give us that same that same idea there that maybe they are well, bronze uh, cannons or something. A little bit of patina on them. Especially given that they're orky. Alright, so these things feel much better about these guys. But I did have to wait. I had to wait to mess around with those because, uh, as always, we have to let that paint set. Here's some more of that green on the sail over here just because uh again reasons hey red smurf how you doing uh now red smurf is uh is really fortunate because you know sometimes you have a phobia or something like that and it's very limiting it's very limiting. you have this phobia kind of controls your life now, Red Smurf used to have that problem. He had a fear of boats. But uh, now that he's overcome that, uh, that ship has sailed. So everybody, please check out Bitron's Hobgoblins there. That's a link. Uh, is that an Insta link? Yeah, that's an Instagram link by Bitron there. So can everybody, please check that out if you could. So again, a little bit of that uh, turquoise here on the bottom of the sails. Now over here... We might turn that on its head and go a little bit more with the orange over there. Now we uh, we thinned down this orange a lot, and that was very effective. Very, I was able to actually do much more with this orange than I thought I was going to be able to, just by virtue of it being so thinned down. Now it, it almost became more like our, our homemade fluorescent paint, actually. So again, everybody, please check out the link that uh, Bithron posted. And also, too, of course, while we're at that, uh, everybody should also check out Armored Wolf on the Etsy's and the Instagram. That's Armored Wolf Production, all things dice bags and leather. So uh, fabulous dice bags, also journal covers, even, uh, even wearable things, barrettes and such. So again, that is Armored Wolf. Check out the Etsy page there. Fantastic works of art. Craftsmanship that goes into those is uh, quite incredible. So yeah, Grand Oracle, I'm still stuck with the Marion Street stuff because I still have not had a chance to do the stupid uh, make my own colors yet. Ah, I'm telling you. I would much rather be using those. Well, now the other thing I want to try and do tonight and or tomorrow is get uh well actually later tonight after the stream is get some of the what is that the padme box and the what's the other bot the witches those two boxes of uh shatterpoint figures uh, so everybody if you, if you want to read another little uh humorous anecdote there 
Chris has dropped another little humorous anecdote. Look at this. We're actually putting a little bit of fiery reflection on the bottom of those uh, bosses over there. Yes, we did. Get to say here a little bit more of the orange right there, too. Why not? And it's funny, uh, Grand Oracle, you know, those, until the Williamsburg paints were found, you know, those were the really expensive ones, right? The giant 55 millimeter tubes for 15 bucks. Uh, it almost seems quaint now, doesn't it, Grand Oracle? After things like, well, I don't know, quinacrinone golden brown and some of, well, and again, well, Doshi probably says, hold my beer. I got, uh, was it the cobalt turquoise? You, sorry, I always keep forgetting that, but yeah. Yeah, Doji says, yeah, you wanna you wanna talk about cost? Let me let me tell you about cost. Now let me see if I can't do this up here. I'm guessing it's supposed to be a crow's nest. Yeah, Grant Oracle, it just, at first it was like, wow, okay, 15 bucks, but then that's a 55 mil tube. And it's not like it goes through it super fast either, right, Grand Oracle? Let me see if I can't get a little more light on these. Uh, I'm not sure if these are supposed to be teeths. If they are, that's, thems are some big teeths there. Ah, the pearling crab. Oh, uh, Grand Oracle. I don't know if you saw in the beginning. Same thing. Uh, same thing, Doji. The uh, I actually use a lot of pearling red in this. There's actually a lot of pearling. I did not actually have any of the Fanchon or Naphthol red out there during the pre-glaze phase. So yeah, I wasn't sure if you guys uh, knew about that. I just want to make sure that you knew. Because that's kind of significant. That's a we haven't used the pearling red in that fashion before, so it was a wee bit of a an experiment there. Yeah, the six tubes, uh, Grant Oracle. Well, the I think the grandkids will be using those maybe. Uh, that that's okay, Grand Oracle. That is okay. Uh, let's throw some of this in here now. A little bit there. Yeah. A little more light on the spar itself. Separate that from the sail. Just realize we had not much over here. Now, so Grand Oracle is uh, Grand Oracle is even going to lose Grand Oracle's studio there. Well, Grand Oracle, the surrender the airbrush. Just hope that uh, they don't start using the oils because you you'll have to. Uh, sneak into some secret area of the house and then you can then do your oils in there but uh, no airbrushing no more airbrushing for grand oracle now let me see if i can't on these canons right here right along this top edge especially since there's no sail above them cast in a shadow There we go. Oh, gee whiz. This is... I'm going to do a whole bunch more here on the uh, poop deck there. Now, let's get some more light on that. Cannon 2. And then let's do something here on this surface. We'll take our 
blending brush to that to tone that down a little. But yeah, we have a whole lot of nothing that's going on here. We did do a little bit of rust there. I might throw some more back there. Maybe even some lighter rust. Maybe we'll try here. Let me uh, let me try that. Take this. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll just use this. Santerra Rosa. A little bit of the radiant yellow there. And we're just going to take this and go doink like so. And we'll just let that go where it may. Wherever it goes, that's what happens. So there you go. There's some there's, a, there's some rust for you. Try some of that over here. Now I still haven't had a chance to. Uh, oh, that uh, Babylon Five Omega class cruiser. I haven't had a chance to print that. I haven't even had a chance to put that on a build plate yet. All right, again, yeah, so I'm going to do a little, that is dingy enough. It doesn't necessarily take as much from away from that as I thought it would, which is good. Get a little bit more of my Terra Rosa out here. So this is, again, the lighter, lighter version of it there. some of that out over here again that's a somewhat lighter version of our rust here just letting that uh, letting it roam where it's wheels it's, whatever it's going to do it's going to do that's I'll throw some more of that back here now some more rust over there Yeah, I was, uh, once I saw just how intense this could be, or Grand Rogue, I thought, you know, well, especially up here, right, because you can't even see any of the, the fire necessarily from, from above, so I think it's okay if we can get away with that here. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's almost it's a full-on pin line wash. Yeah, you could say that's really uh, that is an actual genuine pin line wash. What do we have in here? I'm gonna actually get whatever's in there. <clears throat> We're gonna maybe use again some more of our uh, turquoise here. Back over there. It's, yeah, it looks like that's going to be on screen. And we'll do some of that. We didn't, I don't know if I really did this with the other ones, but I don't know. For this one, I'm going to try that. Okay. Boy, that, that would have been an unfortunate blending brush grab there, because that wasn't a blending brush. This is. That would have given me a nice big yellow streak right across the sail here. But now we have our actual blending brush, and we can very gently get that all mixed together. Now I'm looking at the other, we don't have anything on the interior side of the jib here. So let's do the same thing with this. Like that. Tone that down a bit. Okay, so again, just a little hint of some of the uh, turquoise there. Mm 
make some of this be a little bit uh, and smoother using this is a blending brush right now 